Here's video game sophistry. Video game sophistry. Your one-stop shop for video games, news, reviews, views, and time-wasting fun. Hi, I'm Andy from Video Game Sophistry, and today we're talking to another developer using the funding site Kickstarter to help achieve his artistic goals. Monty Cook has been creating tabletop RPGs for decades, and he has something new up his sleeve. Hi, Monty. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Hi, thanks. It's great to be here. Absolutely. Now, just to start off, what exactly is Kickstarter, for those who don't know? Uh, Kickstarter is a source for crowdfunding, which basically is... Uh, the ability for people, crowdfunding is, is the ability for a producer like myself to create something and have it, rather than have it be funded by some outside source or something like that, but it's funded by the people who actually want the product. Mm-hmm. So, in short, um, I can I can say on Kickstarter, hey, I want to create a new game, and if people are interested in that new game, they can give me money for it up front. Um, I can produce the game and then deliver the the game that I promised. Mm-hmm. Now, you're creating something that a lot of people are very, very in love with, but unfortunately a lot of people aren't really as aware of. What exactly is tabletop RPG play? Well, so uh, if you're familiar at all with Dungeons & Dragons, which has been around since 1974, mm-hmm. um, that's, a ta- that's, that's the granddaddy of all tabletop RPGs. Um, basically, a tabletop role-playing game is... Uh, a group cooperative game that allows people to get together and and basically create a story. Um, in Dungeons and Dragons, it's usually a fantasy story, uh, like you know Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. And in it, each player takes on a role, and uh, the, there's a, another player called a game master that kind of provides the story, um, and, and the other players all run a character. And so they decide what their character does within the confines of that story. Mm-hmm. Now, why should Kickstarter fans invest in Numenera? Numenera is uh, a different kind of role-playing game than anything I've worked on before. It's extremely story-focused. And the reason that I say that is because uh, role-playing games kind of came out of war games. And so a lot of them have a really strong tactical element, um, and with that comes a lot of rules that you know govern you know just exactly how far your character can move in a certain amount of time. And there's there's a it, you know you end up with big lots and lots of big heavy rule books filled with sometimes arcane rules. Mm-hmm. And Numenera um, is an attempt to create something that's far more story-based and allows people to uh, use their imaginations more than just simple, just simply obeying a lot of complicated rules. What drew you to this sort of concept? You said yourself you've been making tabletop RPGs for a long time. What attracted you to the idea behind Numenera? There's, there's two things. One is, um, a, a, like I just had been saying, the, the different kind of gaming. But the other thing that really excites me about Numenera is that it is, uh, I call it a game of ideas. And so to facilitate that, Numenera is set literally a billion years in the future. Mm-hmm. It is super far distant future. Um, and... Uh, so it's a, it's a science fantasy game. And by that, what I mean is um, the technology that people have so far in the future is basically indistinguishable from magic. Mm-hmm. And so it is anything is possible. And this creates lots and lots of interesting situations, lots of interesting, um, really imaginative story ideas. And it creates... Uh, a whole new kind of world to play in. And it's interesting because because the technology is so advanced, for people who like fantasy games, it's going to feel not unlike a fantasy game. Mm-hmm. Um, but for people who like science fiction, um, the fact that everything there is, is sort of grounded in uh, at least extrapolated science, if not real science, um, you know, that that's an attractive pull as well. Absolutely. Now, one big thing, how do you really achieve 
this sense of a universe that is a billion years in the future from an art direction standpoint? What were some of the choices that you made and the people that you're working on development with to make sure that artistically it felt like it had that fusion of science and magic? Well, um, that's something I, I owe a lot to uh, my lead artist, whose name is Kieran Yanner. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he and I, well, where we, our starting point was a French artist um, known as Mobius that uh, we both really adored. And it, so what we've done is we've tried to create something that, that it's the kind of thing, um, the way we describe it is that if you look at the piece of art at first, you think, oh, I'm looking at a piece of fantasy art, right? I'm looking at something that looks like something out of The Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. But then when you look more closely, you realize, oh, wait, there's more going on here. It's, it's sort of that kind of double take um, that we want to achieve in a lot of the art. And I, and I think uh, if you go to the uh, – I've, I've got a lot of the art posted uh, on the website, humanair.com, mm -hmm. and uh, – um, I think I think we've achieved that at least in, in quite a few of the pieces where everything it, 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 you think oh this kind of looks like medieval times oh wait no that's not that's not medieval times right that mm -hmm. this, this is there's something different going on I've noticed it's a change from instead of just having a traditional medieval armor you examine it a little closer and it's flowing differently the edges are kind of sharp in a way that seems different enough that you'd understand that it isn't in the fantasy sort of realm right exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. One of the big pushes you said was to push story. That's what you really, really want from Numenera. What are some of the mechanics that you use to make sure that Numenera is a more story-focused tabletop game? Well, so um, to just give you an example, mm -hmm. um, in a lot of tabletop RPGs, um, things are, uh, events and the flow of the game are very controlled by the rules. Mm -hmm. um, so if if a, a combat encounter starts, there are clear and fast rules that dictate what happens when and that sort of thing. In Numenera, it's actually a part of the rule system that the game master can interject um, with an event that he thinks would make this encounter more interesting, right? Mm -hmm. So it allows him to, to, to create Maybe maybe something more cinematic, maybe just something more challenging, anything that he thinks that would make the story better, and that's written right into the rules. And it's and uh, you know basically what happens is is that he then you know he he might it, it's called GM intrusion, and when the GM makes GM intrusion, he says to one player, you know, not only does your sword swing you know miss your foe, but your sword goes out of your hand and goes skittering across the stone floor. Mm -hmm. Now what do you do? Yeah. And then, um, you know, in the course of the game, the player then gets um, a, a benefit called an experience point that he can then use later on for other effects. So it's sort of like a wheel of karma kind of thing where something mm -hmm. bad happens to you, but then you gain a point that allows you to have something good happen to you later. Because of the innovative new styles, do you think that this game appeals more to the traditional uh, tabletop RPG fans, or is it something that will be easy for someone to just pick up and play? Because I think one of the big issues of uh, tabletop gaming is that it seems as if it's very intimidating. It's something that's completely new, ironically, for a lot of people, even though it was the foundation of a lot of the games they love today. So what have you done to essentially appeal and appease the fans of these genres and to bring in new ones? Well, I think I think that those are two very different audiences, but both of them can be um, pleased by the the approach of kind of an abandonment of really strict rules mm -hmm. and uh, focusing more on character and story. Uh, for new players, there just isn't a lot of new stuff to learn and remember. Everything is uh, intentionally sort of. Um, made to be intuitive. For example, character creation is a very simple process where you create a single sentence that describes your character, mm -hmm. and the choices that you make when you set up that sentence, the, literally the, the adjective, the noun, and the verb that you choose, then dictates the kind of character that you have. And 
um, th this kind of thing makes it really easy for new players. And in fact, um, to help encourage this, as part of the Kickstarter, um, we had a stretch goal that if we reached a hundred thousand dollars, I would donate three hundred copies to libraries and educators. Mm -hmm. And so I really kind of want this to be the kind of game that people can can find and get a hold of uh, and use to teach new players. Yeah. And, sure, but, you know, old experienced players like me, you know, we just sort of, we'll, 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 we'll kind of like all kinds of games. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, I think they, they'll find the, the new take on things really refreshing. Because you've been able, like you said, to eliminate some of the rules that cause it to be intimidating, but you've allowed at least an open canvas to have enough imagination that it kind of appeals to you. Would that be a fair assessment? It would. You know, it really, in many ways, it harkens back to role-playing's roots. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, in 1974, when D&D &D came out, it was a very simple game, you know, in a very small set of tiny little rule books. And the rest was sort of left up to the game master and the players to fill in with their own stories, their own imagination. Numenera kind of takes on that same approach. What has been, so far, the uh, consensus from the playtesters, from people who have played the game, enjoyed it? What have they said so far about Numenera? They like how freeing it is. Mm -hmm. um, I know it I seems like I probably keep harping on this, but um, there's, there's a real tendency when you start playing the more, more complex games that are out there. And I'm not, I'm not really bashing on those games because I, I've worked on a lot of those too. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, where you sort of play the game kind of staring at your character sheet and looking at your options and, you know, you're kind of thinking tactically. Yeah. Um, but in, when we play Numenera, everyone is engaged with the other players more. There's a lot more direct conversation. It's a very much more of a social experience. And uh, I think that people really, people really seem to like that. You had originally pledged a goal of $20,000. And as of September 11th, you're reaching closer to $300,000. Now, firstly, how does it feel to really have all that support? Just is kind of mind-boggling. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are way, way, way beyond sort of my wildest dreams mm -hmm. for this project and the funding. So, uh, you know, in some ways, I'm not even sure it's really sunk in yet. What does this do in terms of changing your development plans? Because like you said, there is the ability to have stretch goals where you foresee if there is more funding. What has this extra amount of revenue done to change what people would experience when Numenera eventually uh, reaches them? Well, that's kind of the brilliance of Kickstarter, in mm -hmm. my opinion, is that it allows people, basically people could, when the Kickstarter started, they could pledge... Uh, like $60, and they would get this very nice package of, you know, the game and the ebook version of the game and some Kickstarter exclusives. And, you know, it was very nice. Mm -hmm. And now those same people, because of the various stretch goals that we've reached, are getting uh, a package that is, you know, many times over in, in value and content mm -hmm. what that package was for that same amount. And so the great thing is, is that that encourages people to go out because we keep reaching these new stretch goals, which means new benefits to backers. They've been able to go out. They've been encouraged to go out and tell their friends and mm -hmm. and their family, "Hey, you really should check this out." And and then we get, we get new backers, but then the old backers are benefited. So we've added, you know, I think it's like five five additional books that will come out in support of the game, mm -hmm. you know, t-shirts, dice, um, cards, all kinds of extras. Uh, the book itself, because of the additional funding, will be larger and, you know, have more beautiful color artwork in it from Kieran and others. So it's very exciting, and I think it, it's the kind of thing where everyone in the end benefits. As a developer, why did you, you kind of touched on it there, but why make the choice to use Kickstarter? What are some of the strengths and unfortunate pitfalls? Well, I think the biggest strength is just simply communication. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been doing this for almost 25 years, and one of the weird things about it is that as a game developer, uh, particularly on the tabletop side, you just you, you put together a game that you think people will like, you hope they'll like, and then you put it into stores and see what happens. Mm -hmm. 
Well, with Kickstarter, you immediately find out if what you're doing is something that sounds really interesting to, to gamers. And, you know, you, you kind of know ahead of time if, you know, you're on the right track, if you're not. It's, it's, it's a wonderful conduit of information like that directly with the people who are going to be playing. Um, I guess one of the pitfalls is that uh, sometimes um, in the process, you know, the, the traditional process is that a, a game developer like me uh, sells the product to uh, in, in the distribution to a distributor mm-hmm. who then sells it to retailers. And if you're not careful, um, you know, those parts of the process can feel left out. But there are things that you can do, like I have created special backer levels to, to appeal specifically to retailers. Okay. And, you know, they can get the book at, at, a, at their normal discount. Um, if they pledge a lot, um, they can actually get uh, me to come to the store and, you know, demo the product and, mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. Um, so uh, I, I want to try, try to include everybody. Yeah, that's a step uh, from talking to uh, other developers of Kickstarter products. That's a step that a lot of them don't really I st- really take to consider, the fact that they are eliminating the distribution side. So it's kind of refreshing to see that you're examining that and seeing that there is an option to still sell it the same way that you traditionally would. Right, right. Well, you know, in the end, I mean, Kickstarter is going to end. I mean, my Kickstarter is mm-hmm. going to end uh, very, very soon here. And... Uh, I don't want that to be the only people who ever get a copy of Numenera. I want Numenera to be sold in stores, and you know, I want it to have longevity. So I know that I've I've got to keep distributors and retailers on my side because mm-hmm. they're they're great allies in that. Now you've been working on this for a while. Anything you'd like to say to the fans who have supported you right from the beginning, and for people new who are just hearing about this right now? I would just say you know thank you so much for your support. It's kind of overwhelming um, and, uh, you know, wonderful to see that, you know, an idea that I had, which appealed to me, but I had no idea if it would appeal to a, a wide audience, is clearly something that, you know, other people find interesting, uh, you know, it, or at least intriguing. And, uh, you know, I just look forward to when the game comes out and we're all playing Numenera. Absolutely. Well, thank you again, Monty, for taking the time to talk to us. Make sure you look at Numenera. All of the Kickstarter information is available right underneath this video. Now, there's only a few days left. If you want to play the game, make sure you invest. It can be as small as $1, and what's the largest amount? Uh, it's $10,000. $10,000 if you are looking to distribute in your stores, or are you just a massive fan who wants many copies to yourself? Again, thanks for taking the time, Monty. Thank you. It's been great. Absolutely. I'm Andy Burkowski from Video Game Sophistry. Head to www.puresophistry.com for more.